Sister Dong, Sister Yang, hearing you fellowship Almighty God's words and witness for His last day's work, I have received great edification and have gained great rewards. Thank God. Thanks be to God. I now understand truths that I failed to understand for years. Many points of confusion in my faith have been resolved. Thank, Thank the Lord. Lord. My heart is more enlightened. I feel that my belief in God has a clearer path. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. We must thank Almighty God. Thank you, God. Brothers and sisters, this is God's divine favor to us. Right. right. Thank, thank the Lord. Yes, certainly. You've received great results from hearing us commune Almighty God's words. What does this illustrate? This shows that the words of Almighty God are the words of the Holy Spirit. They are God's voice. Does everyone agree? Yes. yes. The Lord Jesus left many words unspoken during the Age of Grace. People back then couldn't receive them due to their small spiritual stature. Hence, the Lord Jesus promised to return during the last days, to guide people to understand how to get into all truth. Just as the Lord Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Nowadays, the Lord Jesus has returned as Almighty God in the flesh. Yes. Almighty God has expressed all truth to fully save people, revealing God's management plan. These truths are the water of life that nourishes us. Indeed. Yeah, it's exactly true. Read Almighty God's words often, and we will understand truth, and our lives will be nourished. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, let us read some more of Almighty God's words. Great. Let's turn to page 1454. Almighty God says, This time God comes to do work, not in a spiritual body, but in a very ordinary one. Not only is it the body of God's second incarnation, but also the body in which God returns. It is a very ordinary flesh. In him, you cannot see anything that is different from others. But you can receive from him the truths you have never heard before. This insignificant flesh is the embodiment of all the words of truth from God, that which undertakes God's work in the last days and an expression of the whole of God's disposition for man to come to know. Did you not desire greatly to see the God in heaven? Did you not desire greatly to understand the God in heaven? Did you not desire greatly to see the destination of mankind? He will tell you all these secrets that no man has been able to tell you. And he will even tell you of the truths that you do not understand. He is your gate into the kingdom and your guide into the new age. Such an ordinary flesh holds many unfathomable mysteries. His deeds may be inscrutable to you, but the goal of all the work he does is sufficient for you to see that. He is not a simple flesh as man believes, for he represents the will of God as well as the care shown by God toward mankind in the last days. Though you cannot hear the words he speaks that seem to shake the heavens and earth, or see his eyes like blazing flames, and though you cannot feel the discipline of his iron rod, you can hear from his words the fury of God and know that God shows compassion for mankind. You can see the righteous disposition of God and his wisdom, and moreover realize the concern and care that God has for all mankind. The work of God in the last days is to allow man to see the God in heaven live among men on earth. 
and to enable man to come to know God, obey God, revere God, and love God. This is why he has returned to flesh for a second time. Though what man sees this day is a God that is the same as man, a God with a nose and two eyes, and an unremarkable God. In the end, God will show you that without the existence of this man, the heaven and earth will undergo a tremendous change. Without the existence of this man, the heaven will grow dim, the earth will become chaos, and all mankind will live in famine and plagues. He will show you that without the salvation of God incarnate in the last days, then God would have long ago destroyed all mankind in hell. Without the existence of this flesh, then you would forever be chief of sinners and corpses evermore. You should know that without the existence of this flesh, all mankind would face an inevitable calamity and find it difficult to escape God's more severe punishment of mankind in the last days. Brothers and sisters, let's read another passage. Yes. 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 Who's there? Xin Xin, it's me, Wen Ping. Oh, Pastor Chow, Elder Zhou. Pastor, Pastor Chow, Elder Zhou. Mm. Pastor Chow, Elder Zhou. Pastor Chow, have a seat and we'll discuss whatever you want. Yeah, as I see it, Sister Li. This is a strange matter. Everyone has been welcoming the Lord's return, waiting for the Lord to descend on a cloud so we can be lifted into the air to meet the Lord. I never imagined how Eastern lightning could have come about and testify that the Lord has returned. We have not seen the Lord descend on a cloud, however, and we have not seen the believers raptured up Instead, many of the church's sheep have been stolen away by eastern lightning. Could it be that these people were raptured? Huh. I can't believe this. It's wrong no matter who steals sheep away from our church. We must protect the church. Could it be that only they are a church and we are not a church? Brothers and sisters, our faith in the Lord is based on the Bible. Can this be wrong? Why don't you obey me? You even receive people from Eastern Lightning and lead the brothers and sisters in hearing sermons of Eastern Lightning. So you're not afraid of taking the wrong path? Pastor Chow, Elder Tso, have a seat and discuss this. Yeah, please sit down. Yes, Pastor Chow, have a seat and we'll talk about it. Pastor Chiao, it is clear that you are concerned about us and fear that we will be deceived. I can understand this. However, the Bible has never forbidden us to receive strangers, and the Lord Jesus has never forbidden us to receive Eastern Lightning people. Even less did he forbid hearing the Eastern Lightning's preaching. Right. The Lord Jesus even prophesied that lightning would come out of the East and shine to the West. Amen. Amen. Does our study of Eastern Lightning not conform to the Bible and conform to the Lord's Word? Why must you restrict us? If you don't allow investigation of the Lightning from the East, could it be because people from Eastern Lightning have stolen good sheep? Well, if the Lord came to steal treasures, would you be able to prevent that? Absolutely not. Why don't you seek what the Lord's will is 
about Eastern Lightning stealing sheep. Why don't you earnestly seek and investigate? Does what you are doing conform to the Bible? If Eastern Lightning is the true way and is the Lord becoming manifest, wouldn't you be afraid that you were resisting the Lord? I can't get it. Pastor Chow, whether or not Eastern Lightning is truly the return of the Lord, you can only be sure if you do thorough investigation. Right. If you blindly condemn without investigating or seeking, it would be too easy to condemn the true way and resist God. When you wildly condemn Eastern Lightning, don't you fear resisting God? Have you no reverence for God at all? Your words and deeds are unprincipled and are too dangerous. Indeed. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you believe in Almighty God. We are different in our ways. How can you lecture me? You really have a lot of nerve to dare to brazenly steal our sheep. Who allowed you to preach on our turf? Your words. Do they conform with the word of the Lord? Believers are the Lord's sheep and do not belong to one person or another. Yes. yes. How can you say that? A sheep belongs to you. How can Pastor Chow say we're his sheep? What's wrong? In the last days, the Lord returns for his sheep. If you are truly loyal to the Lord, responsible for the brothers' and sisters' lives, and heard talk of the Lord's return, then you should lead the brothers and sisters in seeking out the Lord's voice and in welcoming his return. Only this would be the way of a loyal and far-sighted servant. Yes. That's right. And what do you do? Why do you always prevent the brothers and sisters from seeking the true way? How do I see your actions and words? Aren't they like those hypocritical Pharisees who resisted the Lord Jesus and his teachings? Do you know what you're doing? I think you should do some soul searching in the Lord's presence about your actions. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ on the basis of the Bible. This cannot be wrong. I think it's you that needs soul searching. Your belief in Almighty God. Is it based in the Bible? Here you are lecturing me. What qualifies you to lecture me? You dare lecture Pastor Chow. If you disregard the pastor's words, you will certainly go astray. Stop talking nonsense. Regardless, you can't preach here without the consent of the pastor and elder. Leave now. If you don't go, we'll call the police. Stop right there. Leave now, or I'm calling the police. Where has your humility, patience, and love gone? Would the Lord be pleased with your actions? Why chase them away? Are you not believers? Sisters, we can't go on like this. Let me escort you out. Mm. The Bible says we should entertain strangers with love. Does your chasing them away tally with the Bible? If you accept their preaching, we'll expel you. How could you act like this? We do this for your own good. That's no good for us. It's too much. I can't How could they be like that? They went too far. Sister Lee, you should understand why we resisted the Eastern Lightning people. Why we chased them away. The Eastern Lightning's preaching is profound. Many people hear their preaching and become believers in Almighty God, betraying the Lord. You have little understanding of the Bible, small spiritual stature, and no discernment. As such, it is easy to be deceived. In acting this way, we are protecting you. Why don't you understand our intent? Pastor Chow, why chase away the Eastern Lightning people? Could it be because they give a good preaching that you fear that we will all be deceived? The Lord in whom we believe is Christ is the true God. We have a basis in the Bible. Why be afraid of being deceived by others? Right. The truth of the Bible is on our side. No matter the person, if his preaching is profound, can it be higher than the Bible's truth? No. no. The preaching of Eastern Lightning is higher than the truth of the Bible. What does this show? It shows God has become manifest and is working. Exactly. Because only the Lord becoming manifest can be higher than biblical truth. Only Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Otherwise, would there be anyone who could give a preaching higher than the truth of the Bible? That's right. <sighs>
It is this matter that should be pondered and pursued. Yes, this is worth careful pondering. Yes, in fact, I had things I wanted to say a long time ago. These years, there is no new light or new enlightenment in these sermons you preach. Going on and on about dead biblical knowledge and empty theory. The brothers and sisters were tired of listening long ago. They are fed up and not getting any nourishment for life. Everywhere, people are negative and weak and have lost the Lord's presence. It's not that you're unclear as pastors and elders. If you truly showed consideration for the Lord's will, why would you not show concern for the lives of your brothers and sisters? Yeah, why? Do you know how much the brothers and sisters suffer and how helpless they are when they have no nourishment for life and live in darkness? At this key time of welcoming the Lord's coming, why don't you lead the brothers and sisters to seek the footprints of God's work? Right. Why don't you lead us? All you know how to do is seal off the church and to resist Eastern lightning. Is that showing consideration for the Lord's will? Ultimately, what's your intent? I really don't understand you. Sister Sung, how could you say that? Isn't my action for your own good? It is. Just because Eastern Lightning's preaching is profound doesn't mean it represents the Lord. And even less, the Lord's manifestation. Could it be that you have forgotten the prophecy of the Lord Jesus? The Lord Jesus said, Then, if any man shall say, To you, see, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, so that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Nowadays, false Christs are everywhere deceiving people. We therefore must be very cautious of Eastern Lightning, lest we be deceived. These past few days, I have seen who you are and what you do very clearly. Tell us the truth. Do you really fear that we'll be deceived? Is that why you're blocking us from pursuing the true way? Is it really so simple? We believe in the Lord Jesus. We are the Lord's sheep. If we have his protection, why should we fear being deceived? Right. The Lord Jesus once said, My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. This illustrates that none of the Lord's sheep can be plucked from his hand by man or by the powers of Satan. That's right. Because the Lord is with us, why should we fear deception by false Christs and false prophets? Could it be that you don't believe in his omnipotence? In obstructing us from pursuing the true way? Are you acting for the Lord? Do you dare say that the Lord would be pleased with your actions? As I see it, your attitude toward Eastern Lightning is faulty because not only do you not pursue and investigate it, you also blindly condemn it. This end time is the most dangerous. We must be accountable to the Lord for our actions. I dare say, Eastern Lightning clearly reveals people. Perhaps only in this matter does it become clear whether we are ultimately lifted up in the rapture or discarded. I urge you, be careful of your actions and rely on your resources. Sister Lee, you cannot speak this way. In our belief in the Lord, how can we not believe in His omnipotence? Right. There is a reason for us not letting you hear the preaching of Eastern Lightning. Think about it. If Eastern Lightning really were the return of the Lord, wouldn't we pastors and elders know this? They'll definitely know it. Would there be any need for others to bear witness to you? You also have heard, in recent years, many good sheep of various sects and denominations have heard the preaching of Eastern Lightning. They believed in Almighty God and betrayed the Lord. As servants and stewards of the Lord, how can we not guard against and resist Eastern Lightning? That's, That's right. right. If all believers followed Eastern Lightning, betraying the Lord, how could we be accountable to the Lord when he comes? Anyway, the Lord has entrusted his flock to us, so we are responsible for protecting you 
and are responsible for your lives. Right. Could it be that we are wrong in acting this way? Pastor Chow is right. Sister Lee, come read the Bible. Paul said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ to another gospel. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you, than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Amen. Therefore, in our belief in the Lord we should uphold, his name and way, we cannot follow any other gospel. But what do you do? You don't adhere to the Bible and don't uphold the name of the Lord. Rather, you believe in the Eastern Lightning's preaching. You have abandoned the Lord and become believers in another gospel. This is betraying the Lord and is apostasy. If you don't admit guilt and repent, you will all be cursed. Elder Zhou, you have quoted the words of Paul of the Bible. In the age of grace, the words of Paul were correct. But the Lord Jesus, speaking about welcoming his return, said, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Amen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. Amen. And my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. The Lord Jesus says to wait vigilantly. Doesn't his prophecy ask us to listen for God's voice and welcome his return? If we investigate the words of Almighty God and can hear the voice of God and see God's appearance, isn't that something God would praise? How can you say this is apostasy? Yeah. 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 I do not approve of your formulation. Though I can't say for certain that Eastern Lightning is the manifestation of his return, I can be certain that Eastern Lightning comes from God. All words uttered by Almighty God are truth. That's right. It's as if the Holy Spirit is speaking to all churches. Amen. We therefore urge you to pursue and investigate Eastern Lightning so that in this matter you don't sin and offend the Lord and won't be cursed. Mother, I'm home. Hello, aunts and uncles. You're home. School's out. That's right. Pastor Chow, Elder Zhou, my daughter is home. I have to cook supper. Okay. Sister Lee, all of you must confess your sins to the Lord. You must not depart from the Lord's way and follow another gospel. This is a crucial time. We're leaving. 